Fall is here and winter is just around the corner. Time to shut down your swimming pool for the winter season. We'll show you how you can do it yourself. RV camping is the perfect outdoor getaway. Today we visit spectacular Rancho Oso, one of the thousand trails, RV resorts and campgrounds in California to experience the great outdoors to the fullest. What happens when we pair one couple looking to buy their first home with a mortgage expert? Fantastic advice on buying that first home. We have tips and advice. This is the show all about you and your space, your home and surroundings. We are Designing Spaces. Here on Designing Spaces, we're all about DIY, so we continue with our summer series on DIY pool care. Well, with fall in the air, many homeowners are faced with shutting down their swimming pools for the winter. The good news, you can do it yourself. Take a look and see how. Summer is over and the family had a great one. Now, it's time to close your pool for the winter. Winterizing your pool helps protect it from freezing and helps to keep the water as clean as possible. So Designing Spaces sent Paul Gillio from HGH Pool Care over to Betsy's house to show her how to do it herself. This was one of our best summers ever, and we're always careful to close up the pool, but we could be doing a much better job of it. This year, I'm determined to get it right. Betsy does a great job of maintaining her pool. Some people are afraid to winterize the pool themselves, but it's really quite easy. And I'm gonna show her some tips on how to do it right. I have so many questions about the right way to close up the pool. What's the best way to know when the time is right? Well, it depends on the family schedule and where you guys live. Some people choose to leave the pool open as long as they can. Others will close the pool as soon as the kids go back to school. Some people that live in warm climates can run the pool all year long. The good news is HTH Pool Care has everything you need to winterize your pool. Let's go down to the local pool supply store and pick up what we need. Okay, sounds like fun. First thing we're going to get is our HTH six-way test strip. So it allows you to test the water and balance it to make sure the pool and the equipment are protected throughout the wintertime. Okay. Okay. The next thing we're going to need is our HTH filter cleaner. The filter definitely needs a good cleaning after the summer months. All right. I'll remember to do that. Okay. The third thing we're going to get is our HTH Super Select shock treatment. This will help clear the water out and make sure the water is ready for when you open the pool again in the springtime. Okay. The last thing we're going to get is our Algae Guard 3X concentrate, which allows us to give a good dose of algaecide to the pool, which it's going to need while it sits all winter time. All right. And that's everything you need. Great. Let's go winterize. Okay. So we have everything we need to winterize your pool. Yes, we do. So now what is step one? Step one is to test and balance the water with the HTH six-way test strips to make sure the pool and the equipment are protected throughout the winter time. These HTH six-way test strips are very simple to use. Simply dip it in, remove it immediately. You're going to wait 15 seconds and compare what's on the pad with what's on the vial. And in milder climates, where the pool's open year-round, you typically just need to test the water once a month. Step two is to shock the water to clear the water out of contaminants. We do that with our HTH Super Select shock treatment. In colder climates, we normally do a double dose of shock treatment. Do you always have to cover the pool? Covering your pool is optional. It does help when you open the pool in the springtime, there'll be less debris in the water, but it is still an option. After we shock the water, we want to run the pool filter 24 to 48 hours. We want to give the pool a good vacuuming, skim the surface, and clean your pump and skimmer baskets. It's very important to make sure the pool's vacuumed so there's no staining from leaves and debris that might sit on the bottom of the pool. Here, you try. All right, let's give this a go. So. This is way easier than I thought. Yeah, you're doing great. Yeah, I can get my kids to do this. That's the best part of it all. Have the kids do it. Let me go ahead and show you the skimmer basket. Okay. This is the first line of defense for your equipment. Simply take the cover off. You're gonna pull the basket out. So I see there's some debris in there now. The skimmer's doing its job. It's, <laughs> it's pulling all, everything off the surface of the pool so it doesn't uh, cause any problems of staining on the bottom of the pool. Well, that's good. And how often should I clean out this basket? You'll want to do it when you winterize like we're doing right now to make okay. sure it's clean. And because your pool's going to be uncovered, you want to check it probably every month unless you have a big storm that blows a bunch of debris into the pool. Whatever gets on the surface of the pool is going to end up in the skimmer basket. Okay. And we just don't want to get too plugged up and then it puts stress on your equipment. Right. And is there anything else I need to know about the filter? Absolutely. 
After a good summer season, it's always a great idea to clean the filter with the HTH filter cleaner. The last step of winterizing is adding a dose of algaecide. For that, we use our HTH AlgaeGuard 3X Concentrate. We're going to add a nice dose of winterizing algaecide to make sure the pool does not get any algae over the wintertime. Well, you've really broken it down for me, and now our investment is protected. Yep, you can always go to our website at hthpools.com for more information on how to winterize your pool, regardless of the climate that you live in. Oh, thanks, I definitely will. The good news is, Betsy's pool's been winterized. The even better news is, Summer will be here before she knows it, and she can rest assured knowing that her pool's been protected. Go to designingspaces.tv to see this portion of the show again. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. Next, Designing Spaces goes to Rancho Oso in California to experience the great outdoors to the fullest. You don't want to miss this, so stick around. A day of horseback riding, hiking scenic trails, and ending the day relaxing at the lodge. Okay, where do I sign up? Designing Spaces visits Spectacular Rancho Oso RV Resort and Campgrounds in California to check out some authentic outdoor activities the whole family can enjoy. Take a look. When you think of camping, you might think of roughing it. Sleeping bags under the stars, a campfire, roasting marshmallows around the open fire. But these days, camping is so much more. Hi, I'm Jeff Fisted, and today on Designing Spaces, we're gonna take a look at camping in a whole different way. I'm here with camping expert Patrick Waite, and we're here at spectacular Rancho Oso RV Resort and Campground. Patrick, what, what can you tell us about this special place? Well, Rancho Oso is part of the Thousand Trails Network of over 80 properties in 22 states in British Columbia. Uh, we've been around since 1969, so we have a long history of providing uh, outdoor camping experiences for our customers. Um, they really like coming out and spending time with their families and friends. What's really unique about this property is it's surrounded by forest preserves. It's located outside of Santa Barbara in beautiful Southern California. And uh, in the 1800s, it was a working ranch. In the 1960s, it was actually turned into the campground that it is today. So it has a long history that really is still uh, th found throughout the property. Rancho Oso is a unique RV resort located in the middle of the National Forest. We are about 30 miles from Santa Barbara and 30 miles from Solvang. And we have a great amenity package including swimming pools, uh, miniature golf, playground, volleyball, basketball, horseshoe pits, amenities that appeal not only to families with children, but to seniors as well. We've been members since 1989 and we've we're still coming because we've enjoyed it. The scenery, the weather, the horses, the open space, everything about it. It's a really nice experience. It's, it's, uh, the properties are great. They're kept up nicely. So Rancho Oso also has unique accommodations as well. In our Western Village, of course, we have covered wagons as well as ranch cabins, but we also have RV sites ranging from tent camping to water electric sites that are nicely shaded, to full hookup sites that are on terraced levels that have spectacular views of the mountains as well. So we're standing here in front of a covered wagon and it's not for just display. You can really sleep in these things? That's pretty cool. It is cool. Our guests love spending the night in our covered wagons. And if you're looking for a more rustic experience, you could also spend the night in one of our teepees. Teepees, covered wagons, Western Village, what else you got here? We got bunk houses that you could spend the night in in our western village, but if you're looking for a more luxurious experience, you can stay in one of our two-story cabins. So you and the little missus get the two-story cabin, send the rugrats to the teepee, you're living in paradise. Sounds like a plan to me. What makes Rancho Oso unique and different from other RV resorts is our horseback riding. We offer guided trail rides from ages 8 to 80, one hour, two hour, and three hour rides in the middle of the National Forest. In addition to the horseback riding on the safe and gentle horses, people can also bring their own horses here and take them out on their own. Well, we've been coming up here for many years. Uh, my grandfather and father grew up in the area. And we come up here to ride our horses and just enjoy the horse trails. There's everything to offer up here. You've got water, mountains, uh, riverbeds, there's everything. And it's one of the few places in Southern California that does have very nice horse trails. I've been coming up here for 20 years 
And even though I live in a beautiful cabin right down the road on Paradise Road, it's well worth the membership to, to have here for guests and family members to come up and enjoy. And we just really look forward to it. The amenities are wonderful. It's always kept very clean and there's a lot of activities for people of all ages. And now that we have the new little baby foal, Sunny, uh, we have a lot more visitors and people we don't even know that just come up to see him. So they get to share those memories with their children. One thing I love about this place is the horses. It's really great out here, the open space and, and the air, and it's really a nice place to come. Hey, Pat, thanks for having me out today. I had a great time here. I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. Do you guys have a website where our viewers at home can learn more and get more information? We do. It's thousandtrails.com. We'll have a link to that website up at designingspaces.tv, where you can see portions of this episode anytime you want by clicking the appropriate link. Don't forget to join in the conversation at Facebook at facebook.com forward slash dspacestv. For Designing Spaces, I'm Jeff Bisted. We'll see you guys next time. Things are looking up in the real estate market these days, and now is an excellent time to buy that first home. We'll get tips and advice from an expert next here on Designing Spaces. What happens when one couple looking to buy their first home are paired with a mortgage expert? Well, you get good advice on how to acquire that loan on that first house. There's lots of good tips and advice on getting your first mortgage, so take a look. John and Sally have a great life. They've lived in their apartment for two years and feel like they need more space. So they're thinking about leaving their one bedroom apartment and buying a home. Like most first time buyers, They've got lots of questions about the mortgage process. We're so excited to be owning our own home. This is a real milestone for us. But we're a little scared too. We just don't want to bite off more than we can chew. Now let's go meet Joel in person. Designing Spaces sent them to meet with Wells Fargo mortgage professional, Joel Sarmiento, to help them find the answers. Nice meeting the both of you this morning. Nice you too. You know, buying a home is both exciting and overwhelming all at the same time, even for those who've done it before. I'm here to make your process as smooth and simple as possible. Let me ask you a question. Have you started looking for a home yet? No, we've been online using some real estate sites and our calculators, but friends of ours told us that we really need to get pre-approved first to find out how much we can even spend. Plus, we really want to know more about the mortgage process and have someone like yourself be there with us to guide us along and answer any questions that we may have. Getting pre-approved is good advice. Our Wells Fargo Priority Buyer Program will help you determine a price range that you can manage and your real estate agent will know that you're ready to buy. And you can also use this as your leverage with your seller since they'll know that you're a serious buyer. But we don't even know if we can get a mortgage. I hear it's really tough these days. Honey, don't be so pessimistic. Joel, what do mortgage lenders look for? I mean, I've heard it's a really complicated process. Lenders will consider your credit history, your income, total debt, employment experience, and your job stability when processing your mortgage application. But they also want to verify that you can actually make your home mortgage payment. So they'll take your total monthly debt plus your housing payment, your principal, interest, taxes, and insurance as a percentage of your gross monthly income. I know it's a lot to take in, but I'm always here to help. Let me show you this, my first home learning experience. It's right here. You can use your PC, tablet, or your smartphone so that you continue to learn more information and become a successful homeowner. Let me ask you a question. How much have you saved for your down payment? We have some money. But we don't know if it's enough. Usually you need 20% down, right? And that's a lot of money. Who can afford that? Wait a minute. It's a myth that you need 20% down to purchase a home. Wells Fargo has a variety of products and programs and if you need down payment assistance, you may be able to qualify through the cities or nonprofit organizations. My sister said we should go with a fixed rate mortgage. What's the difference between a fixed rate and an adjustable rate mortgage? A fixed rate mortgage 
will stay the same for the life of your loan. An adjustable rate can change after a period of time. It can go up or down every year or after, depending on the market rates. Loan term is an important factor. There's long term and short term. Depending on how quickly you want to pay off your loan, it can impact your monthly payment and your interest rate. But what if we're not approved? I guess there's a chance of that, right? There's always a chance that your loan application could be declined, but Wells Fargo is committed in helping you be a successful homeowner. There are a variety of tools and resources, such as my home roadmap that offers two free hours of financial coaching, as well as the learning and planning center, and my first home, which we discussed earlier. So, do we wanna do this? I think so. Is that a yes? It's a yes. What's next, Joel? First, let's get your priority buyer pre-approval so that your real estate agent and the seller will know that you're qualified for a loan. Once you're able to find a home, we'll finalize the loan application process. In the meantime, what I'll do is I'll email you our mortgage process checklist that you can use to monitor and keep track of your progress. Let me give you a tour of the Wells Fargo website where you're able to get additional information that will help you through the process. I do have an important question for the both of you though. Have you found a realtor yet? If not, I can recommend several for you who know the market really well. And please remember, I'm always here to guide you through the process. Sounds great. Whether you're a first time buyer or an experienced homeowner, buying a home is an exciting new beginning. Go to designingspaces.tv to see this portion of the show again. This is the show all about you and your space, your home and surroundings. We're Designing Spaces. We take on DIY projects, get creative with interior design, and get with the pros on remodeling and home improvements. I can see myself living here, I really can. I did my homework online and decided it's time for a makeover. I love being able to capture the everyday stories of life. Look at that, we're gonna send that picture to daddy and to grandma. On Pet Spaces, we provide for our four-legged friends so they can have better health and a happy lifestyle. We deal with guinea pigs and hamsters and rabbits and goats and we've even had pot-bellied pigs come through here and one marmoset as well. Think Green is visiting the Honda Smart Home in Davis, California. A homeowner wants to think about their own priorities um, when they think about what sustainable and green means to them. Honda is striving to be a company that society wants to exist. It's not just about the transportation. We want to be able to provide solutions to the future in order for society to meet its long-term goals. At Designing Spaces, we look at how technology is changing the way we live for the better. From taking on pool care for the winter, getting out to enjoy camping and experience the great outdoors, and finally, what it takes for a first-time mortgage to buy that dream house. It's really all about your lifestyle, your family, and your future. We are here to provide you with the information you need to make those dreams come true. We are Designing Spaces. information about anything you've seen on today's show or to find out how to be part of the show, log on to designingspaces.tv. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash dspacesTV. Or friend us on Facebook. Type in the words Designing Spaces. Connect with us on Pinterest to follow all of our design ideas and share yours with us. You can visit these websites to learn more about the participants on this edition of Designing Spaces.